How do you measure imaging and soundstage? Whew. There's a loaded question from Rob Ranella in Chicago. Rob writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, by and large, imaging and soundstage is a function of perception. Yeah. Thus is mostly subjective and identifiable by an experienced ear. I understand this. However, if we are to implement a testing <laughs> sticky pages procedure on the amplified signal, what would this test look like such that it would render empirical and repeatable data? Speakers notwithstanding, how does one collect and quantify measurable data from the amplifier output all the way upstream to the signal source such that one could qualify the signal's path imaging and soundstage performance characteristics? For example, high quality electrolytics will positively impact the signal and the imaging. We all, myself included, know this to be true. But to date, I've never found a hard and fast means of qualitatively measuring this seemingly nebulous and subjective phenomena. Yeehaw! <laughs> well, the simple answer is I don't know any empirical tests like, for example, lower distortion or lower output impedance on a power amplifier that affect sound staging and imaging, which certainly are perceived qualities within a hi-fi system. Now, having said that, I can tell you some fairly good rules to follow in design, if that's what you're interested in, that in my experience lead to good imaging, and those things we can measure. So just to be clear, I don't have or know of an imaging meter, right? I don't know anything we can set back there that can just say, yeah, here's the imaging's better, it's got greater depth and all of that. But conversely, I can say that if you do these steps, if you follow them, you'll get better imaging that you hear, okay? So it isn't a complete answer. I, I don't have, you know, a meter that's going to measure imaging. But so what we can say, we can say that Imaging in particular, and when we're going to ignore tonal quality, we're going to ignore the, the realism, etc. We're just going to talk about imaging for a moment. One of the greatest things uh, that a designer can do is the control of feedback. <clears throat> in my experience, the greater the feedback, the worse the imaging. Now, I know that's going to raise the hair on a lot of people's necks, and they're going to say, well, my amplifier is a ton of, of, of feedback, uh, and, and, and it images beautifully. Okay, fair enough. I'm not saying that amplifiers with lots of feedback don't image. What I'm saying is that as we remove feedback and we keep other parameters in check, the imaging and the openness of the soundstage improve dramatically. So now let's step back after our opening arguments. <laughs> I feel like the impeachment trial or something here. When you set up a system, imaging, regardless of the electronics, in some form or another is easy. Right? All you got to do is set your speakers, your left and right speakers, appropriately such that when you sit in the center, you'll get the center phantom image. Because as we all know, stereo left and right is two channel, but it actually is three because we're making that center phantom image. And we also know that almost any speaker system can have depth if we can pull the speakers out away from the wall a little bit, if we can give it some room to breathe and we have reasonable electronics connected to it on reasonable speakers, you should be able to have the image appear behind the speakers as you should. And the height of a singer, for instance, uh, can roughly be 
set in. So you could be sitting there listening to your system all the while getting a great image. And whatever amp you put on there, the image changes a little bit, but it's still there. So that rough cut would suggest that you can always have imaging. So what does it mean then when I say we can better the imaging by lowering the feedback, for example? So we have to have a basis, a starting point. And I'm assuming that whatever starting point you've got, you've got a decent image. As we pull feedback out of circuits, and, and it isn't just a matter of, oh, just throw this resistor or change this out and we got less feedback. I mean, in order to do that, here I am rambling again and I apologize. In order to do that, we have to control the open loop performance, right? So in many circuits, feedback is absolutely necessary. Without it, it's not even going to work. Take a, a, a chip op amp. Right, just a, a 5534, um, uh, 70, whatever. Most 99% of all off the shelf chip op amps, which much of our musical devices that reproduce sound for us rely upon, won't work without feedback. You, you, it has so much gain that without feedback, it just, <laughs> it just bangs up against the rail. It doesn't even work, right? So, and then reducing feedback then is almost something impossible. So you can really only do that effectively with discrete circuitry that you've designed in the first place. So don't, don't get me wrong, I'm just trying to answer a, a specific question. But if you have a discrete circuit and, and you've managed to design it so it operates reasonably well without any feedback, then you can close that loop down to a point where you still have a clean sound and an open sound and you'll notice that as you add more and more feedback and close that loop down more and more, all the while keeping the gain the same, the image openness is going to start collapsing and you can hear it. One last thing I'll tell you because this is getting too long already. We could talk about this for hours. You had mentioned capacitors. Imaging and clarity of that image is greatly affected by inline signal components such as capacitors. And it's one of the reasons why we focused very hard on direct coupling everything to get rid of as much as we can in the signal path. Stick a capacitor in there and all of a sudden it's, it's a little muddled relative to what we had with a direct couple thing. Anyway, could go on for hours, not going to. Hope that gives you a little bit of insight. It's the best I got. All right. Thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.